It's just about seven minutes before the hour of seven o'clock on this Monday morning. I'm Kimberly D'Souza. Now we're continuing the conversation this week about school violence and in studio to help me unpack exactly, you know, some of the causes and what, what can be described as an increase maybe in school violence is Inspector Michelle Lewis from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Inspector, good morning. It's always a pleasure to have you here with us. Good morning. Thank you very much for having us. It is our pleasure also. Now, Inspector, the Ministry of Education would have said that at least 15 schools, since schools reopened last week, Tuesday, at least 15 schools would have been affected by the school violence that we're seeing. And one of the things that she's saying is that in the interim, while they're working on the interministerial committee, they're thinking about putting the community policing in school. Is this going to be effective? The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is very concerned with the development that we have seen in schools um, with our children. And of course, as you know, children are persons under the age of 18. And so the mind of a child is very um, um, sensitive, very impressionable. And so in the organization in Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, we have two framework that work towards helping in relation to crime and criminal activities and torts and behavior, bad um, behavior and temperament among young persons. Those two departments would be the community policing and the police youth clubs. So now that we have children back out to schools in full, because there was um, restrictions during the COVID period, you would see community policing officers going back into schools and doing school visits, doing school lectures within every school in the um, station divisions or station districts, as the case may be. I myself was a community policing officer, so I can tell you that that is one of the things we do in a very robust manner. We communicate very well with the principals of the school, the guidance officers with the school, and we are always at hand to help. Sometimes when the school have a problem with a child in particular, they would call us in, they would call in the parent, and we would go in and we'll have um, an intervention where um, we kind of guide the parent, guide the child, and of course we help the parent to introduce the child to police youth clubs. Because police youth club is one of those things that help a child with discipline, um, help a child in development, your social attitude, and all that kind of thing. Inspector, would mm -hmm. you say that the, the fact that we've been in a lockdown for two years and the police youth clubs weren't allowed to operate, uh, do you think that had an impact on what we're seeing today and all that schools are opening back up? Um, Although um, police youth clubs were not allowed to operate in full, as with any other organization, some police youth clubs conducted online um, sessions. It is not the same as direct, but it still kept that connectivity with the children. And so that would have helped to still keep that level of discipline, that level of relationship and connection between the child, the parent, and the police. One of the main reasons for police youth clubs and having an officer in the police street club is that it's almost like you have a police officer in your home. If you have a problem with the child, you just call the police street club leader. And if, for example, you, you know, there's a situation with your child that the police officer in, in particular want to get a subject specialist or an officer in a particular section in the organization to really treat with that area, the officer will do that. Mm -hmm. So you really have a good support in police street clubs and in the youth club leader. Now, Inspector, we could make the, uh, the argument that children mimic what they see. And mm -hmm. of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we would have seen an increase in domestic violence. Yes, yes. Are they lashing out because of this? Is it that something they're seeing, you know, um, even adults in the society, or even adults may home may be doing? Um, based on the videos that we saw and what the Ministry of Education have indicated, from very early, we saw that children entered school with a level of hostility, anger, violence, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say that they got it from the school environment on this instance. Definitely they came in with it. And so there, there could be um, um, evidence to suggest that based on the fact that they now came from home and been in that environment for such a considerable period of time without the level of socializing, um, socialization that they would normally engage in, that if they would have seen any level of violence, and how it was treated with, it can impact their behavior coming out. Do you think, uh, Inspector, that maybe the things that they've been exposed to, not just, not just the, like seeing your parents or people around you, but what we look at on television, how does that, how do you think that would have affected? Like, I mean, if you spend your last two years watching violent movies, there's a chance you could come back to school violent too? So, um, for, 
whatever you feed your mind with gemini generally as you know um mm -hmm. you know what you put in is what you get out if yeah. you eat very healthy foods you know you have a nice glow on your face you know like you nah, you know <laughs> but but inspector do you think that the parents uh, have what what responsibility do we give to the parents i mean i know we're saying that you know we want the police youth clubs to be able to help and to be the mediator between parents and children but how do we fix the, the parents right so it starts with the home the foundation the crucial real important aspect mm -hmm. of a child development is in the home and you cannot take that away and hand it over to a teacher or police it basis in the parent is in the home so you might not have a parent as in a mother father but you might have a person with responsibility or you may have a guardian legal or otherwise right because it could be through the court or otherwise and that that whatever is instilled in that child is what carries that child into the adulthood mm -hmm. so that the the values and the norms and that kind of thing um, that a child gets from that age is what is going to um, steer the child now um, we know that all homes are not perfect, um, hence the reason for the level of criminality in the country, right? And so um, organizations such as non-government organizations, um, churches, um, religious groups, mosques, temples, um, any religious group helps in relation to discipline of a child. I heard the I interview that you had early on just before I came on and they spoke of the arts. Um, the arts also help in discipline. Anything, um, cadets, anything like that that helps to discipline a child to let you know what is right and what is wrong and what you should and should not do helps in the development of a child. So doing it very early Engaging a child in music in very, at a very early mm -hmm. age, it helps. Engaging a child in sporting disciplines, regardless of what it is, helps to discipline that child going forward. Um, Inspector Lewis, I mean, we are going to be having the community police in school. Can a police officer arrest a child? Most certainly. Um, of course, actually in law, um, according to law, the age where a child is not considered to have the mind to commit a criminal offense is seven years old. I thought it was six. Yeah, well, and that's very, very young. Yeah. So think about someone who is in secondary school 11 or 13 years. It began hard back And yeah, doing sense. something, and of the opinion that because I'm in a uniform, I cannot be arrested. Well, that is a lie. It mm -hmm. is not a truth. So that if you do something wrong, you are responsible for your actions and you can be held accountable whether it um, through legal means through a charge or otherwise and we have seen persons being charged um, in Trinidad and Tobago we have two types of court and also that's, not, that's not why we have YTC <laughs> but we have YTC well, but, that, but you have the courts. children's court yeah. the family right. court so you have one in Port of Spain in St. Clair and then you have one in San Fernando mm -hmm. and even though the system of, of, of the children's court is not designed for that kind of draconian measure completely when it, it when a child does something wrong because they look at what would have caused the child to do something wrong in the first mm -hmm. place and depending on what it is they take the steps accordingly because you also have children who adjudicate um, in the children's court um, sometimes they get community time because it's not always that you know um, YTC or a harsher measure of punishment is imposed upon a child. But we want to encourage children that there are avenues to treat with anger and violence. Mm -hmm. We want you to be the best person that you can be. And when you have a video of yourself circulating, it does not encourage a child now to, you know, try to withhold because image of a person and the mind of a person is something that you may not understand entirely. And so when those videos are circulated by your very peers who are sometimes jeering you on to do this, um, when, you, when it has settled, when the dust has settled, you realize, you know what, I shouldn't have really done that. You I just take chain up for no good Walk reason. away and just leave mm -hmm. it alone. Yeah. So, you know, children, you know, walk away. Okay. In the first instance, do not carry weapons to school. In the first instance, you know, because I saw some of the videos and it appeared as if some of the children actually had a device of some sort, some kind of weapon on them in case of. Mm -hmm. And so um, parents, we know that sometimes when you leave home, you may not see the child. You could, the child might leave home with a, might leave after you would have left because someone else is there. Um, but talk to your children as far as possible. Encourage your children to do what is right. You know, encourage your children to do what is right. If you keep saying it to them and encouraging them to do that, they will eventually do it. Pay attention to them, what's in their book bag, and help them along the way. 
you know, give them a little reward, you know, treat them, you know, give them that, <laughs> encourage them to do what is Positive right. Positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Inspector Lewis, as I said, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us on now. And, you know, just unpacking some of the things that the police is doing as we're seeing these, uh, these incidents of school violence. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. Spoil the child. The good book say, spare the rod, spoil the 